back at the cheese making again and before I get started I will once again say that I am a rank amateur at this I make a video every time I make a cheese that I haven't made before and that's what I'm doing this time and this one is a bit more complicated than any that I have made in the past and requires according to the recipe on cheesemaking.com a bit more skill so I don't know if I've got that skill or not we'll find out towards the end um, 64.7 degrees Fahrenheit let's say close to 65 degrees Fahrenheit I guess I'm trying to get it up to 86 degrees and once again in my hot water bath and it wouldn't hurt if I mentioned the kind of cheese that I'm going to make I guess it's a cheese in the style of Wensleydale from Yorkshire in England, sort of the north of England, I guess, Yorkshire is. We're up to 65 already, so we're just warming up. I've had Wensleydale a few times. There's an excellent cheese market in the Fredericton Farmer's Market. You can get Wensleydale there, at least you could in the past. I suppose you still can. This is in the style of Wensleydale, because once again, Wensleydale is a patented trademark, and the actual method of making the G's is held secret by them, but this is, I think according to what I've read in the online recipe there, this is a combination of several different methods that they discovered that people in, in Yorkshire are doing to make what would seem to be the Wensleydale cheese. So, what I just added was one teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in a quarter of a cup of water to increase the acidity of the milk. I'm making a four gallon cheese batch which should yield somewhere in the neighborhood of four pounds of cheese. The recipe that I'm following is for two gallons so I'm doubling everything and once again the link down below will take you to the recipe. So I'll bring you back when I've got this up to temperature finally got it up to 86 degrees, at least it was a second or two ago. 85.8, oh, 86 right on there. So That is the target temperature reached. And now you add uh, direct set mesophilic culture. And I get my supplies from the same people who wrote the recipe, so they call it C101. This particular cheese has a long um, aging, fermenting acetification stage. So if you were doing the two gallon size, which would make a two pound cheese roughly, you would uh, only use half of one of these sachets, which the first thing you'd have to do is figure out how to divide that in half. But since I've doubled it, I don't have to worry about that. That will stay on the surface and hydrate for a couple of minutes and then I'll spend about a minute mixing it in. And then it gets covered and it sets for one hour at 86 degrees. I won't keep checking to make sure the temperature stays there, just let it set for an hour. Okay, I've been interrupted three or four times by phone calls in this last few minutes here. Uh, my nephew was involved in a car accident. He's not hurt. Well, that's, the, that's the main thing. Quite a bit of damage to his car. But anyway, what I was trying to say is this has a longer, slower uh, fermentation period to acidify the milk, this particular kind of cheese, so that you use half of uh, what you would normally use of the mesophilic C101, the direct set mesophilic that you hopefully saw me dust in there a while ago. It has been thoroughly mixed in, and now it is going to maintain the 86 degree temperature and it stays there for an hour before we add the, the rennet. It has ripened for an hour and the temperature dropped just slightly. It dropped by 0.4 of a degree but I have brought it back up to 86. I'm just about. <laughs> I'm just about to put my half teaspoon of single strength rennet in there without diluting it in any water. I've now diluted it in a quarter of a cup of just tap water for me. There's no, no chlorine in the tap water. So it gets a half teaspoon of single strength rennet. I'll 
mix that in an up and down motion here for a good minute. And then it is covered and allowed to rest for 40 minutes while it forms a curd. So I will bring you back in 40 minutes time. Well, it's been setting for 45 minutes and it's for, formed a nice curd. And now you cut it into half inch cubes. And if you've watched me do this before, you know that I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. <laughs> I will continue making cuts in this direction the whole way over then I will change and do this direction and then I will finish it off I use a wire whisk to go down and do the cutting down below the surface I'll bring you back at that point well I finished the cross hatch cutting and now I take my wire whisk and I just gradually go around And after I've completed each circuit, I lower the whisk a little further. And I'll keep doing that until I reach the bottom of the kettle here. And I'll bring you back at that point. Well, the curd has all been cut, and now you let it settle for five minutes. I'll bring you back after the five minutes. The curd has been settling now for five minutes and I'm checking the temperature. It has dropped about half a degree, so I will increase the temperature back up to 86. But what you do at this point is over a 30 minute period, you just stir it gently from top to bottom once every five minutes. So I will bring you back at the end of the 30 minute period. Well 30 minutes is up. I stirred it just gently once every five minutes. The idea of that was just to prevent the curds from forming into one large clump on the bottom of the pot. And now comes the interesting part. <laughs> this part is the cooking and uh, sort of drying of the curd. Over 90 minutes, an hour and a half, you maintain the 86 degree temperature and you gently stir from top to bottom continuously for 90 minutes. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but I'm sure I'll survive it. Um, this will draw a lot of the whey out of the curd so the curds will be much smaller when we finish and they will also be cooked very gently over an hour and a half so I'll bring you back in 90 minutes time well I have been standing here for almost 90 minutes slowly stirring this and maintaining the 86 degrees Fahrenheit temperature which wasn't too difficult I think I had to Increase it a couple of times. And that is my timer down ladle. <laughs> 90 minutes is a long time when you're standing in one spot stirring something. Now the curd is allowed to settle to the bottom. And in that time frame, a few minutes while it's doing that, I'll set up a colander with uh, lined with cheesecloth. And the uh, I'll be dumping the whey and the curd into the colander as soon as I'm ready to do that. Sorry if I block your view at some point while I'm doing this, but I don't want to drop all of this in the sink or on the floor. I unfortunately am just wasting the, the way. I know there are other uses for it, but it's such a bother for me to try to collect it. And I don't bother.
got more to go in there, more, more curd, the, the way is all out. Pick it up and that'll help. Help some of the moisture drain out of it and give me a little more space, I hope. cheesecloth gets tied into a bundle at this point. Maybe do a second knot on top of that or not. I don't want it to fall out, but I'll yeah, we'll do it this way, I guess. And I'll show you what I do with that in just a second. That is the piece of cheesecloth with the curd in it. The knots are now on the bottom. It's been turned upside down. And I'm going to put a small cheese board on top of there. And they say a little weight helps for this next phase. And they recommend a half gallon of, of water in a, in a milk jug. So that's what I'm doing. And now the water, this is back in the double boiler thing. The, and uh, maintain the temperature at 86 degrees to keep the curd warm for half an hour. So I'll bring you back in half hour. It's been 30 minutes under ever how much weight that is, a half a gallon of milk. The purpose here was just to consolidate the curd. And as you can probably see, I guess you can see it has expelled quite a bit of whey. So I will pour off the whey and bring you back for the next phase. Okay, that's the curd removed from the cheesecloth and back in the hot water bath in this container to keep it at 86 degrees. And now you cut this as close as possible into two inch cubes. Which may be easier said than done. And I'm not measuring, I'm guessing at two inches. It's very solid. One of my two inches is bigger than the other two inch. I had a feeling that might happen. This goes in the cheesecloth again once I get it cut and I'll bring you back at that stage and tell you what happens next. Well, there's my cubes back in the cheesecloth tied up into a bundle again. You don't use any weight this time but now for the next two hours every 30 minutes you open the bundle and break each cube roughly in half with your fingers. Uh, that's doing that four times over the next two hours and that way you should end up with uh, curds that are approximately a half inch not exactly square but approximately a half inch cubes or half inch pieces of, of curd and all this time you're maintaining the heat at 86 it's in the hot water bath again and I'll put the cover on it um, and at each time that I open the bundle if it's expelled some some whey I will discard the way so probably bring you back and show you one or two of those openings and breaking of the curds this is the third time for breaking the pieces of curd in half once I finish this it will go tied up and back for the fourth time of, of uh, letting it rest at 86 degrees for half hour. Every time that I have brought it out to do this, it has dispelled more whey, so I've dumped the extra whey off. 
these pieces are now getting very firm. Some are bigger than others because some of my two inch blocks are bigger than others. So I'm, I'm being selective at the ones that I break in half here. The uh, next time, after it's had 30 minutes to rest again, I will again break it in half, but then it goes into the, into the mold. So, or if it gets salted first and then it goes into the mold. Anyway, you see what I'm doing, and it's kind of a long process. I won't make you watch the whole thing. I'll bring you back when I'm ready to salt this and put it in the mold. Well, I just finished the two hours of resting and giving up part of its way. And I think I have them down to well, something like half-inch pieces of curd. I've weighed it and it weighs a little over four pounds. So you're supposed to add 1.5% of that weight as salt. I'm, I'm adding an ounce of, of salt. Half of it in there now and I'll put the other half in and there's one that needs further breaking up. I'll put the other half in after I've done some mixing here. Very firm at this point. Still breaking up curds. And I'll continue mixing, and if I find any more big pieces, breaking them up a little bit. I'll bring you back in a few minutes when it's time to put it in the mold. Finally, it's been a long day. Last, it goes in the mold. Could just pour it in, but I'm scared I'd end up getting most of it on the floor. If you watched my uh, recent video on making the cheddar cheese, you know that I have a new cheese press. I'm not going to use it immediately on this cheese though. Um, it gets pressed now for overnight for 12 hours at 5 pounds pressure. Now you could do that with the cheese press. But, as it expels more and more of the whey, then it loses part of the pressure and you'd be constantly adjusting it. I don't know how much whey is going to come out under five pounds pressure, but for me the easiest thing to do here is to back with my dumbbells. <laughs> I didn't think I'd ever be using them again. But once I've done this, it will then go in the cheese press. But now it goes for 12 hours at 5 pounds pressure. Hopefully consolidates enough that it uh, will be in one piece and I can turn it over and wrap it. These wires are... Well, I should just take them off, I guess. But I used those when I used to use my Dutch uh, cheese press. It, they hang on the arm with the, with the wires. but. I haven't used the Dutch cheese press in quite a while. Nothing wrong with it, it's a nice press, but it only you can only make up to a two pound cheese in it, and I find that if I'm going to go through all this effort, I'd like to make a larger cheese. So I'll bring you back in the morning after this has had at least 12 hours at five pounds of pressure. Well, good morning, everybody. It's been a little over 12 hours at five pounds of pressure, and it has expelled a lot of uh, whey. 
Time to take it out, rewrap it, and get it on the cheese press, I guess. Hopefully it's consolidated enough that it won't fall apart. Certainly, still see the pieces of, uh, of curry. In their photographs, it looked quite similar to that. So I'm not, I'm not discouraged yet. Got it in the press, and now it goes for five hours at 20 pounds of pressure. I'm sure I'll have to do some adjusting. Oops, that's too much. Yeah. I'm sure that will have to be adjusted several times during the five hours because as it the springs press down and more whey comes out. The 20 pounds will be lost and it'll go down below 20 pounds, which is why I use the, the dumbbells for the first five hours at five pounds pressure. But it gets pressed now, as I said, for five hours at 20 pounds, and then after that it has two pressings of 12 hours each for 50 pounds. So it will be another 24 hours, more than 24 hours, 36 hours almost. Um, before it's finished its pressing and at the end of that it uh, you can still see some of the veining and things on the side but if it, if everything works out well it it, uh, it should be a lot more consolidated than it is now so I'll bring you back in five hours time well, it's been five hours at 20 pounds I think I only had to adjust it once so it hasn't really compressed anything very much and for the first hour, I thought it wasn't going to expel any more whey. It took about an hour to get started. But once it got going, it did expel a fair amount, I guess. I find a place to put everything isn't easy. Over. I guess it is a little more on the solid side, but still lots of spaces. But it is quite firm. Hold it with no fear of it breaking apart, anyway. Okay. Now it says 40 to 50 pounds for 12 hours. I'm going to go with 50. I want to get this thing as compact as you can get it, I guess. That's about where I want it. These little weights are what make it so that the spring won't, you know, just pop back up. And they have 
an etching of what's supposed to look like a mouse. I have to look at it for quite some time before I can see the mouse, but you put that side up and that way they will lock. There it is at 50 pounds. May need to be adjusted. I guess I said I adjusted it once with the 20 pounds. But 50 pounds for the next 12 hours, which will be after midnight tonight. But I will stay up and do it. And then it goes for the last time after you turn it for another 12 hours. So I'll see you at midnight. Well, it has had its first 12 hours at 50 pounds. And I did adjust it a few times, but not very much. It has let a lot of more of the whey come out. Now to see what the cheese is looking like. Still lots of spaces. I don't think I'm ever going to get rid of them, I guess. But. It's nice and solid, but I don't see how those will ever be compacted so that you won't see them. back for its last 12 hours once again at 50 pounds of pressure. Already for its last pressing I'll bring you back when I take it out of the mold for the final time and start drying it before I can vacuum seal it. That will be tomorrow around noon time I guess. I'm not so sure it's supposed to look like that. <laughs> However that's after its final pressing for 12 hours and it's still, it's, you know, it's well held together and whatever, but I'm glad I'm not going to have to try to wax it. There's too many crevices. It would be almost impossible. I will let it air dry, and then I will uh, seal it in a vacuum seal bag. And um, it's supposed to age for two to four months. Uh, it'll probably, mine will probably age until December, like a lot of the other cheeses that I've just made over the past few weeks. And I will try it and see if it's anything at all like a Wensleydale cheese. But that's what I ended up with anyway. Thank you very much for watching.